there are always new architecture trends on the horizon. Modular construction, smart material, 3D printing. But no one can deny the biggest one for this age is green. More trees starts to climb up the buildings in Singapore, Milan, Shanghai, and Chengdu. Which makes me think of the legendary hanging gardens of Babylon, which are often imagined as the palace of terraces containing numerous trees and exotic flowers. So what exactly is the green architecture we really need? I'm traveling around the world to visit a league of ambitious new engineering wonders and find out the extraordinary building challenges and the intelligence given to those giants. Well, I'm so excited! <laughs> Let me clarify first, no such Babylon gardens have ever been found in excavations in Mesopotamia, but that's never prevented them from inspiring architects with one idea or another of green architecture. 自然跟高密度城市空间的一个结合点，这个也是在当下国际上比较流行的一个城市再野化和城市再重新自然化的这么一个过程。我理解这是一个回归，其实就是可持续的一种再现和可持续的一种回答吧。Meet this city's first near zero energy office building with less than one third of a typical building's energy consumption and more than 18 percent of renewable energy usage. 这个建筑跟湖区，它其实是一个自然的一个过渡和一个自然的渗透，也是一个自然的延续。Around the world, debates surround those rewilding buildings, because keeping a building green is not that green. Sometimes, it costs more. So we're in the top 60% of the construction is all construction. We can to the to recover our water. Every year, we can save up to 1,700 tons of water. We can use it to the whole building to be green. 建筑的南侧就是向阳的那一侧，它采取的是智能滴灌的这种方式。But a green building is not just about creating a vegetation cover in a more sustainable way. It's more about cutting greenhouse gases. A building pumps out carbon in every phase of its existence, from the moment a rock is jackhammered out of the mountainside until the day 60 or 100 years later. When workers strip it for parts and pack the waste off. This here, its sides, right? There are many holes. This is by the standard of the wall. This is by the standard of the wall. Zhong Peng's job is to squeeze out every possible gram of carbon emission of this building, taking advantage of the power of design. We have three types of building. One is direct combustion. The second type is our hot power plant. The hot power is the heat and the electricity. 这一块叫做范围二的间接碳排放，是我们的范围三，就是叫隐含碳排放。它最大头的这个来源就是建筑材料的生产过程当中产生的二氧化碳。比方说，我们现在最常用的这个混凝土，实际上最大的碳排放就是维持这个建筑运行这些的碳排放，大概占了三分之二这样的一个比例。If the breaking point is electricity, rooftop solar panels can help a bit. In this case, they work with battery storage to offer 10%. However, a one cent for all approach is to generate electricity in the grid all through renewable energy. That requires a society-wide phase out of fossil fuel, which is apparently out of the hands of architects. But their innovation can still keep the building working on a shrinking carbon budget. We reduce the carbon emissions, reduce the carbon emissions. The most important part is the self-sustaining energy, the power of heat and cooling. We reduce the heat and cooling. 
to reduce energy use, architects decide to borrow some from nature. 就是我们通常讲，希望节能建筑，它是一个规整的形状。就是我们的外立面，它越规整，接触外自然的面越少，因为我避免跟外界发生能量的交换嘛。但是这个案例里面啊，这个个例里面，我们就认为，就是你把能量隔绝在外围，它不一定是好的。我们更提倡它跟能量进行交换，那就说我们要增加它的外界面。增加它外界面是什么方式呢？我觉得可以把这块打散。就当块跟块之间进行重新组合的时候，你会发现，就是它的顶哈、啊，它的底都会出现新的这样的跟外界接触的表面积出来，啊，满足我更多的光照的需求。同时，它会形成一些边庭和中庭的关系，同时形成一些垂直的风道，然后辅助我们带走热量。当我们的这个室外的气流穿过这个建筑的时候，你多一些这个体型上头的错动，其实是有多一些这个风。穿入到建筑、进入到建筑的这个机会，九个天窗，就是这些块块中间有天窗，它起到一个烟囱效应，就是拔风的作用。那么一进一出，就把室内的这个热空气带走了，你就可以不用空调了。This unique design can not only reduce electricity when we use the building, but also reduce carbon emissions when we build it. If you rearrange those buildings. You will find they are actually identical. They are modules made in a factory. In our third apartment complex, the display is 84%. Over the design of the building, the building has to have enough standard standardized standards to be able 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 to 但是它背后是标准化设计的，标准化那它一定也是意味着节约的。But there is still the carbon budget that is out of the hands of architects, like the mass production of steel and cement. From construction to using, buildings are responsible for 37% of global carbon emissions and 34% of energy demand, despite the huge technological advances. 技术进步的速度其实是跟不上的。那还有更重要的就是改变大拆大建，就是我们要降低建筑建造和拆除的这个频次。The lessons from this avant-garde architecture will be applied to Jones' old office building. The facade has been redesigned to introduce wind and reduce reliance on air conditioning, and to create more structures for vegetation and solar panels. But for an existing building. Architects rely on hard technology. 把这个燃气燃烧的这个锅炉直接置换为用电的空气源热泵，就是可再生能源。直接把空气里面的热和冷换出来之后，供这栋大楼使用。尤其是冬季，二氧化碳直接碳排放降为零了。The true green building may not look that green, but the green is in the new technology, new designs. And new ideas.